Hello, beautiful, beautiful yogis. It is day seven of our seven days yoga journey. And today is about joy. So I thought I will bring in this little bundle of joy in our household that's been bringing so much, so much happy moments, cheeky moments to our week. So here is Pepper. Say hello, Pepper. Say hello, Pepper. He's just had a very long nap. So I thought he will be the most well-behaved to come and say hello. So, <laughs> but for our practice today, we will be really exploring joy, looking for joy and letting it find us. Because when the mind looks for something, the mind finds what it seeks. So we say hello, we say bye-bye, Pepper, and here we go. We're going to get started. Yes, who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? <laughs> so find your mat and when you are ready, go ahead and join me. Soon enough, Peppa will be joining us for longer sessions. Won't you, Peppa? Okay, so we are going to start in a child's pose, coming down on your knees. Maybe you'd like to keep your knees a little bit wider, but when you are ready, walk your hands out in front, lengthening, and then allowing yourself to fold down, closing the eyes as you get there. Let's take a nice big breath in to draw ourselves into the body. And a nice big breath out. Taking the invitation to arise, be here, breath in, breath out, one more time, and exhale, gently start to lift up into your tabletop position, keeping the hands underneath the shoulders, walking the knees back if you need to. And with a breath in, we let the belly draw up, arch the spine, coming into our cow pose. On the exhale, round through the spine, chin to chest. So these are probably my favorite ways to get into the body. So breath in to arch, breath out and round, waking up the spine. If you'd like to, you can close your eyes. Staying here, feeling yourself through the body. Slow breathing. Calm breathing. Let's do one more round like that. With a breath in, drop the belly. And with the exhale now, as you round up into your cat, can you press back into your child's pose, really lengthening through the arms. And we join that. With a breath in, come back to tabletop into your cow pose, arching. With the exhale, rounding through the spine, pressing back into your child's pose. Keep moving this way, breathing into arch, lifting up. Exhale into child's pose, rounding through the back. One more time. And exhale, find your child's pose. Rest there for a few moments again. Close the eyes, feel the breath. Notice how the body is responding to stillness, to movement. And when we are ready, we lift back up into our tabletop. And from here, we will take a puppy pose, very fitting. <laughs> In the name of Pepper, let's take a puppy pose. So walk your hands forward and allow your elbows to come down, but keep them in front of your shoulders. You can take the hands into prayer here, keeping the knees underneath your hips. Let your chest push away from you and come down towards the ground. You're coming into this nice arch through the upper back, opening your shoulders, your chest, and then taking your hands up towards the ceiling and maybe the, the thumbs to the back of the neck here. So the tailbone is lifting, the sitting bones are arching, 
and the belly is dropping, the chest is kind of dropping, it should feel a very nice opening here. So feel your heart space, opening it literally in the body, but maybe starting to add that intention that in this practice we are opening ourselves, our heart, our awareness to look for joy and it's so valuable to realize that happiness isn't something that happens to us it's something we make so happiness is a skill and joy is a skill and everything is kind of a habit of the mind in the same way that we are so used to focusing on the bad or looking for the bad, the things to worry about, we can look for joy. We can try to bring that balance. So take another breath in here. Feel the warmth through the face maybe. And another breath out. Gently come out of that. Press back up into your tabletop and we'll do three push-ups here. So find a half plank position, leaning forward with the shoulders over the wrists, tucking your tailbone, so squeeze your glutes and really draw your chest and the belly up so the front of the body is scooping into the back body and we're very strong here. We breathe in, with the exhale, lower halfway down, leaning forward, squeezing the elbows into the sides, breath in strongly, press up, see if you can Find a straight line to do that. Exhale, press down. One more time, we lift up. With the exhale, halfway down, hold for a moment, draw the belly button up, and then release all the way down to the ground. Beautiful. We lift up into our baby cobra. Can you peel the chest up? Pull the shoulders down, and this time, maybe hovering the hands up from the floor. Squeeze your glutes, lengthen your lower back, and continue reaching through the crown of the head so your entire spine all the way into the neck is really long, reaching towards the front of your room. We take another breath in. And exhale, hands to the ground, lift up back into your tabletop, and we come into our first downward facing dog. Find the breath, you stay here. You can be still or you can move around in any way that feels good. Hands are active. One more breath in. Breathe out. We walk to the back of our mats. So Start to step your hands towards your feet. And when you get to the back, turn your toes out to the sides and squat down into a malasana, your little yogi squat. I'll turn towards you, but I really like to keep my heels lifted here. So I will be able to lift up and lengthen through the spine more, but whatever variation is nicer for you, choose what works for your body. But now, can you press that left arm against your left knee, taking the hand to the sides, and take the right hand to your belly and lift it up, and then the right hand to your chest and guide it up towards the ceiling opening, and then releasing that arm towards the sky, opening, receiving, inviting joy. Even in this moment, you know, what can we choose to focus on? The joy that we are here to practice together, the joy that you have this time to be with yourself, do something that fills your cup. One more breath in and exhale, release. Let's do that to the other side. Press the right arm against that knee so you open it, then the other hand to the belly, guide it up towards the ceiling, hand to the chest, same thing, we open it up and then reach all the way towards the sky. Nice and wide reach from one hand into the other. We breathe, we fill ourselves with this energy 
of the breath. Breathing in, breathing out. One more time. And exhale, release. So you should be at the back of your mat, but we are just gonna make our way to the top of the mat and fun little kind of crow bunny hops, whatever you might wanna call it. So in any way that it's gonna work for you, with the hands really active, so no passive fingers, no weight just in the wrists, but keep spreading it through the palms that it would be nice for your wrists. But we start to lean into the hands, kind of rocking forward, maybe lifting the toes just for a moment, but kind of hopping our way as little frogs to the top of our mats and try and hook those knees around the arms, squeezing through the inner thighs. And maybe at the top of your mat, we can do a slower version of that. We gaze forward, fingers grip the mat, you lift the hips higher and then press, press, press your knees into the upper arms or maybe around the elbows, broaden the upper spine, bend into the elbows and lean as gradually as you can into your hands. Maybe you find a crow balance. Maybe we don't, we really don't care about the end results of anything that we do in the practice. We care about our ability to stay in the process, in the moment, because that's where the joy lies. So even with things outside of a mat in our lives, you know, when we achieve things or when we work on things, it's so much more enjoyable to be there for the process, for what we are learning in that moment, instead of rushing to the end goal because then it gets all defined by what we imagine to be success or failure if we redefine success to be the act of learning then we can never fail right so find your forward fold from here now soft knees relax your head maybe take a sway from side to side if you'd like to, you can hold onto the elbows, feeling the weight of the body dangling, swaying out. Find some playful energy here. Maybe you used to do this as a child, just, you know, doing things without an agenda. That's the purpose of play, just for the sake of having fun. We make it so serious when we grow up, but tapping into that inner child, we have all of us within ourselves. Let's start to play and have fun with it. So take a nice breath in. And with the exhale, sigh out. Release your hands down to the ground. Chin to chest, we roll up and then start to bring ourselves up into standing one bone at a time, taking our time to stretch through the spine, guiding us up to lift and straighten. Nice. We find our Tadasana. We connect through the feet, pressing them down into the ground, energy flowing through the body, palms facing forward. Beautiful. With a breath in, reach the arms overhead, lengthen and really grow tall into the fingers exhale take your hands into the heart so in prayer pose really press down through your feet here squeeze your glutes so you will keep your lower back nice and long but from here start to reach your chest up towards the thumbs gently leaning back and then maybe the arms can go overhead leaning a little bit behind but your job here is to really stay long and strong through your spine. So if the lower back is kind of compressing, keep squeezing your glutes and keep reaching up through the hands. Take another breath in. And on the exhale, we fall down to the ground. Breathing in halfway lift, hands to shins, lengthening. Exhale, hands to the ground. We step the right foot back and we take the knee to the ground. Can you keep the toes curled here? And with a breath in, we reach the arms up towards the sky. Exhale, take your hands behind the back, interlacing your fingers. 
Maybe the front foot wants to slide a bit forward so you're in a bit deeper lunge. But nice and strong, we keep pushing down into the earth. With a breath in now, lift the chest, shoulders roll down. Exhale, reach the hands up and away from you. And maybe explore a gentle opening, lifting your chest up, gazing forward as you lean back. Again, we're really opening ourselves here, inviting vulnerability through the body and then through the heart to open up to what we want to invite there, how we can meet ourselves and bring some play, some joy, some lightness into the mix. Take another breath in and exhale. Release your hands down and gently place them to frame the front foot. And then we send that leg back. So left leg behind you in three-legged tabletop. The right toe stayed on the ground, curled into the floor. And we're gonna have some fun with this, um, with this playful transition. So you rock forward, shoulders over the fingers, and then you bend the elbows, keeping them close, pressing the chest to the ground, keep that leg floating. Then we straighten the arms, lift back up, and now we take the bottom knee from the ground, straighten into three-legged down dog, and then draw the opposite knee into the chest. So left knee to the chest, tucking into three-legged plank. We do that again, kick the leg up and back, then take the right knee back to the floor and press yourself to the floor, chest to the ground, bending the elbows, pressing back up into three-legged tabletop, lift the bottom knee from the ground, straighten that leg and take the opposite, opposite knee into the chest. Let's do one more time. Kick the left leg up, three-legged dog, right knee to the ground, press the chest to the floor, bend through the elbows, and lift yourself back up. We straighten the bottom leg one more time. Take the left knee into the chest and step the foot through this time. Beautiful. So now lean your weight into the front foot, gliding the back leg up. And we come into this standing split. Don't let that hip open. So keep the engagement in the glutes. So you can kick that foot, make it really active. Keep your glutes leveled and squaring. And if you'd like to here, maybe the left hand can hold onto your left ankle and you pull yourself closer to that leg. Standing knee can be a bit soft, it's up to you. And it's up to your hamstrings to tell you what feels good. So keep listening. If you'd like to make this more wobbly, play around with that balance. Again, to look for joy to let go of seriousness, maybe both hands can wrap around that ankle and you pull yourself a bit closer. As always, we give permission to fall, to play, to fail. So if that adult self is really coming to be here in the practice, <laughs> can you find that playfulness within you? The child that would do this just for the fun of it. When you're ready, Release your hands and step that foot to the top of your mat. Beautiful. Soften your knees. Let your legs relax, swaying from side to side here. And then again, through a nice, slow ragdoll, chin to chest, we start to roll up into standing. And rolling one bone at a time. Releasing the shoulders away. Lengthening the neck, the crown of the head, and finally the chin up. Beautiful. Let's do that flow on the other side. So press your feet down. With a breath in, arms to the sky, reaching, looking to your fingers. Exhale, hands to the heart in prayer. We really press down through the feet, squeezing the glutes, and then inhale. Start to lift your chest into the thumbs. Leaning gently back and reaching the arms overhead. Spacious sensation in your entire spine. Keep reaching through the hands. Keep pressing through the feet down. The feet. <laughs> the feet. One more breath in. On the exhale, slowly fall down to the ground. 
We breathe in, halfway lift. Exhale, hands down, step your left foot back, take the knee to the ground, but we keep the toes curled. Reach the arms up to the sky, and then go ahead and take the hands to the back of you, interlacing your fingers. Maybe sliding that front foot forward to deepen, but to stay strong here with the breath in chest up, shoulders pull back and exhale. We reach the hands up and away from us. Inner thighs are squeezing towards one another. And if you'd like to, maybe you open up your chest, gaze slightly up as you lean back, but only as far as this is feeling good in the body, in the lower back. Keep breathing. One more time. And exhale, release your hands and we take them down to frame the front foot. From there, kick that right leg back behind you, free like a tabletop. Make sure your left toes are curled into the ground and then we rock forward. We bend the elbows, press the chest to the ground, then straighten the arms nice and strong, lift up. Bottom knee lifts up and straightens and then draw the opposite leg that right knee into the chest. We do that again, kick the leg up and back, three-legged dog, left knee down to the floor, bend the elbows, chest to the ground, press strongly back and up, lift the bottom knee, straighten the leg, and right knee to the chest, pulsing in. One more time, we kick back up, three-legged dog, left knee down, chest to the ground, beautiful. Last time we press up. Push the bottom knee up and take the right knee into your chest. Step it through this time. Beautiful. And when we're ready, leap forward into the foot, gliding the left leg up and back, your standing splits. So don't open that hip. Even if the leg can lift higher, see if you can feel it more in the glute max. So extending, lifting your leg up. Beautiful, standing knee can be a bit soft, especially if that's what your hamstrings are asking you to do. So remembering that that is what we're doing this week, learning to work with ourselves, our body, not against it. And if it's fun here, maybe the right hand can come to the ankle and pull you closer into that forward fold. Maybe if it's fun, to challenge ourselves here just for the sake of playing. Maybe both hands come to that ankle and we pull ourselves closer. But if it's anything that doesn't feel fun or, you know, triggers the ego too much, we take the hand down. We help ourselves where we can breathe, where the energy of our effort is still light, where we can laugh at ourselves, at the struggle. <laughs> Take another breath in, wobble around. And when you're ready, step that foot down and release. So to the top of your mat, beautiful. Maybe go ahead here, find your malasana again, opening the knees out to the sides. This time pressing the elbows against the knees, palms together in prayer. With a breath in, lift your chest. With the exhale, roll the shoulders down. Breathe in, breathe out. Become aware of your face, the energy around it. Are you holding tension? Can you gently smile? That tends to be the hardest adjustment of them all. Remembering to smile at our struggles, at our challenges looking for joy, you know, and it doesn't have to be the big things. Our happiness really lies in the simple things, in the daily things, in the rituals, the routines, the mundane. So take another breath in as you are. And with the exhale, we take one hand out in front of us and one hand behind. Let yourself Roll onto your bum. We're going to take a very big hug here. So wrapping the arms around and then resting our face, maybe our forehead, towards the knees. 
close your eyes. Feel the breath again here. Maybe allowing these moments of silence, of stillness rather, to be the moments where we reflect and remember our practice this week. So all the six days before, maybe those lessons or signposts that we can keep to ourselves that whenever we get lost or stuck in anything, we know what to lean back onto. And so this journey was really about bringing light to this difficult and dark year we've been having turning on that light from within ourselves so it can guide us. So remembering our first day of gratitude, how this year has been really difficult and challenging, but maybe this is the year where we are reminded the most of the things that we have taken for granted and that we should never take them for granted again. So maybe it's the year where we truly appreciate everything we have, how lucky we are, how blessed we are for what we already have. And in our day two, our practice for connection, that lesson to Choose courage to always connect to ourselves, especially when it is difficult to do so. Because when we run away from ourselves or deny parts of ourselves or judge parts of ourselves, that's when being with ourselves becomes more scary. And so to keep our body and the mind the home that it is for us, we have to stay there. We have to welcome the guests that come through the thoughts or feelings or emotions and let them go. But when we close the door to deny parts of ourselves, that's when those parts can't leave. Those things that are difficult to be with get stuck and we closed their exit. Our practice of giving, reminding us of that exchange of energy, reminding us that there's so much we can't control what other people do or how the world is around us, but we can influence that a little bit by giving what we want to receive, by being what we want to feel, by being the reflection of what we want to receive. as this year has been a huge challenge on our patients because we just want to get back to things the way we were, the things we really miss that have been taken away from us. And as we're heading into the holidays and our patients, you know, gets tested, what can it teach us when it's the most triggering and challenging? Can we stop to watch the reactions to maybe realize that the best response from there is no response and it can pass that trigger. And something I keep on falling back to as the biggest practice for me in my life is to choose kindness, to be the most kind to myself in the moments when I least want to. Because in the moments when we struggle the most, it's exactly what we need the most. Our own support, our own ability to have our backs. 
with love, kindness, compassion. Feeling your breath here, allow it to bring you back into the present moment. And how incredible is it to recognize that we don't have to wait for another moment to realize that this is it. This is our life, this moment here. So what do we want to look for? What do we want to take from this moment? Why do we need to wait for bigger things to happen for us to look for joy and happiness? As Albert Einstein has said, there are only two ways to live your life. One is like nothing in your life is a miracle. And the other one is that everything in your life is a miracle. So let's keep looking for joy, looking for the magic, looking for the miracles all around us. Because every moment can be it if we look for it. Let's gently unroll out of this little hug out of this little shelter we created for ourselves. And maybe keeping your eyes closed, you step your feet out and we make our way down onto the mat. We will roll onto the back, onto the spine here. And then take your feet closer towards you. We can release the arms out to the sides and then take your right leg on top of the left, squeezing your thighs together. Maybe even the ankles can interlace, so imagine you're doing your eagle legs. With that squeeze of the thighs, allow the knees to drop to the left as you turn your head over to the right. So feel the stretch, the release of your lower back, your body here. So living in a way where every moment can be and feel like a miracle. So maybe it's magical that we are able to feel our body here, to move it, to feel the breath, to tune into that sensation, take another breath in and breathe out. Roll yourself back to center and Unwind your legs, find that ego bind on the other side, left leg on top. When you're ready, drop the knees to the right, turn your head over to the left. Draw yourself back into the breath to be here, to live your life where it happens, in the moment here. Imagine if we didn't take every breath for granted, because it's so automatic. Every moment that we live, we're breathing, but not every moment is guaranteed. And this year is really reminding us that. So how truly wonderful, magical, incredibly blessing it is that we are here to breathe and that it feels easy to take it into the lungs. Draw another breath in and another breath out and roll your knees back and up and then unwinding your legs, take your knees into the chest. So it wouldn't be a joyful practice, a happy practice if we didn't take a happy baby. So now open your knees out with your hands. We kick the feet up towards the ceiling and wherever your hands want to hold by the shins, the ankles or the outsides of the feet, allow yourself to softly, playfully rock it out. So really tuning into that playful energy within you, 
that inner child that doesn't have an agenda when it comes to play, when it comes to enjoying things. They do them for the sake of doing them, being in the moment. So let yourself softly rock out, maybe smile, relax your face. And when you're good to let it all go, we take the knees into our chest, we give ourselves the biggest squeeze, and then lengthen out for your Shavasana. Drop the feet out wide, relax the ankles, shoulders pull away from the neck. And maybe we finish with the hands on the heart and the belly. Ground yourself back into breathing, feeling the rise as you inhale. Feeling the fall into the earth as you exhale. Breathe in. Breathe out. A few more like that. Exhale. Feel that energy move through the body. Imagine not taking anything for granted here, the way the body feels, the way the breath moves, the fact that you can feel your hands on your heart, on your belly, the fact that you can be here still to enjoy, to tune in, to feel yourself. We take one more breath in. One more breath out. Take the palms together in prayer and bringing our thumbs to the space in between our eyebrows, connecting to ourselves through that touch of the thumbs into the forehead. Let's say it together to ourselves and to each other this greeting to start and end our practices with namaste. So take another breath in. And with the exhale, say namaste. And just to reinforce the meaning of this greeting, of this word, what it means is that the light in me recognizes the light in you. I see the best in you and I see the best in me. Namaste. Gently release your hands and take your knees into your chest now. Give yourself a hug, a squeeze. And let's roll over to either side of our bodies, pressing down to lift up into seated. Find Sukhasana just for a few moments. And very, very well done. Thank you all so much for joining me on these seven days of yoga journey into Christmas. I hope that this filled your cup. I hope that it connects you to that place within yourself, you know, within all of us that we already have, that place within us that wants to be open, that wants to be loving, that wants to be kind, but that we keep sheltering and building the walls around us because of the things that frighten us, the, thing that, the things that scare us. And because this year has been so scary, so difficult, it's ever more important that we stay open and we stay kind to ourselves and we stay kind to each other because when things are the most scary, that's when we need that the most from ourselves and from each other. So thank you all so, so much again. I wish you the most wonderful break and the very Merry Christmas. Stay safe, enjoy your time with your family and keep, keep guiding yourself back to yourself with all these lessons with all these signposts with all these tools we've explored this week i hope they come in handy lots of love and i will see you in the new year
Я ж юга, я ж юга, мій такий бой. Apologies for the baby puppy voice, but he's just too cute. I can't handle, I can't handle it. Yes, Pepper. Who's a good boy? Who needs to stretch out? Show us how it's done. Downward facing dog, Pepper. Downward facing dog. Upward facing dog. Hey, boy. We practice on the mat. We don't eat the mat. I know, I know. Eating is part of, part of practicing for you. Yes. We need to go potty, Pepper. We need to go potty. Yes, and you need to get your lunch because you haven't had it yet. You haven't had it yet. Hey, oh, Papa. Oh, Papa. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Pepperoni, you're such a good boy. You're such a cheeky boy. Such a cheeky boy. Cheeky, cheeky boy. Yes. Yes. Yes, such a good boy. Such a good boy, Pepper. <laughs> Pepper, sit. Sit. Sit, boy. Sit. Good boy. But you'd be better if you stayed sitting. You'd be better if you stayed sitting. But we're going to take you out for a pee-pee. Okay? We're going to take you out for a poop. Maybe a poopy, And then we're going to give you lunch. And then we're going to give you lunch. I know, I know. I know. I know. 